Welcome, uh, my name is Simon Worthington. I'm a researcher from the Open Science Lab at the German National Library of Science and Technology in Hanover. Uh, the presentation today is called Rapid Publishing for Public Health Books Against COVID-19. And presenting along with me is Raquel Olate from Interpunk Studios. Raquel will cover the issues related to multi-format typesetting and using GitHub as a publishing platform. The two case studies that we have to present today both involve trying to overcome the challenges for fully automating multi-format book production uh, and distribution. Uh, so the multi -form the formats involved are ebook, print on demand, screen PDF, uh, web book, website, uh, and creating a packaged source. Uh, the first case study involved the production of eight book sprints with the Academy for Public Health uh, in Dusseldorf, Germany. And the second book, as well, and the second um, case study was related to uh, post processing a back catalogue of reports mm -hmm. and then new reports coming out from a UK group called Independent Sage, which was set up by the former chief scientist to the UK government, Sir David King, uh, in response to the COVID-19 situation. Uh, the motivation. We are using the book as a technology and social practice within healthcare knowledge management. Uh, for example, the book sprint. Uh, um, we use the book sprint as a method to bring together healthcare professionals to write and publish a textbook collaboratively, which means that knowledge can be updated in real time with full academic quality standards uh, and bypass publishers' slow and expensive workflows. Uh, under normal conditions, a medical, medical expert would have to buy back a copy of a textbook that they had contributed to. But with open licensing and open access, this changes. Now, instead, the book is open and instantly available on GitHub, uh, available as multi-format to read on your mobile, uh, and aut automatically available via print-on-demand services such as Ingram's Lightning Source service, which distributes onto Amazon and other retailers uh, for next day print delivery. The vision we have for this future book uh, is one that encompasses open science. So this means be going beyond open access and open literature uh, to look at the whole research life, life cycle and what out of that life cycle can be used in the book. So this means open data, persistent identifiers, uh, taxonomies, linked open data, uh, and also the questions that are there within open science around social justice in terms of uh, equity, in terms of access to knowledge, and also diversity in terms of participation in scholarship. Our major challenges. We have two cornerstones uh, to our work. First of all is providing the authors with an online collaborative word-like environment we have non-technical writers, so a markdown solution or something won't work for them. Uh, the second is that we have to produce five output formats that need to be typesetted and validate against the distribution channel channels. So we call this publication ready outputs. Making an ebook is not enough. It's got to be an ebook that fully validates against a distribution channel. Wrapped up in that is uh, a number of yeah, uh, surrounding uh, challenges. Um, so, of course, uh, CSS typesetting is, is, is key to that. Um, we choose to, choose to use GitHub as a, uh, as a publishing um, file storage place, as a place to publish to. Uh, so how we do deal with that. Uh, we need to deal with the packaging and manifest issues, the, thing, the issues that different publication types have different reading orders and we want to include our open science um, uh, type considerations. Um, and I would say challenges that we haven't been able to meet yet is the organization and distribution of our metadata and how to automate the multi-channel distribution. There's so many outlets to go to that that's something, yeah, uh, yeah, is way over our horizon. 
Uh, the technology stack. Uh, we aim to stay within the W3C's uh, open standards framework as much as possible, but not everything is defined there, down to simple things like uh, table captions not being defined in HTML. Uh, all of our software is open source. Uh, for our web editor, we are using Fidus Writer. Uh, for storage uh, and web serving, we are using GitHub. Git, yeah, Git, GitHub, and GitHub Pages. Uh, of course, we're using Vivio style uh, for our main part of our CSS typesetting. We use the Page Media CSS format um, as our yeah as our CSS standard. Um, and then for packaging and the manifest, uh, we are using W3C's lightweight packaging format. Um, the publication manifest from the W3C in combination with the Webbook Level 1 unofficial proposal. Uh, as a source, we are using XHTML from an uncompressed uh, uh, yeah, uh, EPUB. And for interoperability, we look to use the Mecca manuscript exchange format, or we have that under consideration. Um, what I, I want to hand over to Raquel now from Interpunct, and she's going to take you through the, yeah, the multi-format typesetting and the, the GitHub uh, as a publishing place. I am Raquel Eulate, graphic CSS designer from Interpunk Studios. I have been working on the multi-format typesetting for these health books against COVID. Multi-format typesetting, faster and cheaper. This part of the workflow contains the largest amount of problems to overcome and where the greatest effort has to be applied. The objective is to fully automate the process so that a graphic designer doesn't have to manually lay out each page and the expensive Adobe Toolkit can be removed from the workflow. A designer is still needed to create templates, but as a manual tab setting was removed by desktop publishing in 1980s, so the book designer role will change again. We are looking to see if we can create a bookstrap-like model of designing where the designer can work with a set of code libraries but this is still a long way off. One such a project was Bleach eBook Framework, but now this continue. We have to use three typesetting tracks. eBook, CSS typesetting for web, PDF and POD, and website webbook typesetting. A major issue is that the book becomes unstable and complex when it becomes a multi-format, and the publishing industries and the standard bodies have done very little to resolve the situations. In fact, they have hindered the situation with little care for the book as a technical object. What are covers? What is a table of contents? How to scrub items from the talk? What is a page? Does the web browser support half a nation in my language? Why do tables not have table descriptions? Have image replacement for tables that can display in ebooks? How to get references to displays as end of page, end of chapter, end of book as a pop-up? GitHub as a publishing platform. Our way forward after a series of messy experiments is to use an uncompressed EPUB file on GitHub that contains multiple HTML files. The EPUB will be modified to comply with the web book level while an official proposal packaging. Then we use page media CSS to render the book via GitHub pages using BiblioStyle typesetting JavaScript. The BiblioStyle setup allowed us to save a PDF from Chrome browser back to GitHub. These same HTML files can simultaneously render a website on GitHub pages. The EPUB is generated straight out of GitHub from Fido's Writer. The current process has some manual steps such as browser PDF rendering. The beauty of using GitHub as a publishing location is that it's free on the open web and leverages a huge infrastructure. Git or GitLab also can be used. Packaging and manifest. Uh, a book by definition is a discrete object that needs some bounding, but how is this maintained on the open web? This is where open standards should come into play, but it appears that there's no clear standard that has been adopted, either as de jure or de facto standards yet. The primary objective 
uh, of packaging is to keep everything intrinsic to a book in one place together. Sounds simple, but it can be hard to know where to make the boundaries with something that needs to exist over time. Currently, we have adopted Webbook Level 1, the unofficial proposal for packaging from Daniel Gladsman, co-chair 2008-15 uh, of the W3C's CSS Working Group. Uh, the approach would be combined with the W3C's publication manifest and be informed by the W3C's lightweight packaging format. These types of conventions are needed, we think, to allow for more complexity uh, and for media and data types, so, uh, data types and data sources uh, to be used, such as in, as, is, as is the case in our area of open science. At a very basic level, we need we simply need uh, different reading or orders in the manifest uh, and to make some content only available in certain formats like for example the back cover only needs to be available in print on demand and not in ebook metadata and content distribution um, now as you can see through our work and our research um, our interests are in the automation of uh, the publishing workflows. Uh, our focus has been on the typesetting and producing publication ready outputs, uh, files that are validated for our different multi channel distribution. Um, but in the area of metadata and content distribution, most of what we do is manual at the moment. Uh, we face challenges in terms of uh, with metadata, in terms of authoring, storing, and distributing. Uh, and similarly with uh, our our, our content in terms of going out to trade and academic channels. Now we have had one kind of interesting success, which is really the simple use of GitHub and GitHub Pages uh, through GitHub Pages generation of a uh, free website. We can put in the links to the other formats. So in terms of someone making a publication that is open on the web, that works well, but in terms of going out into retail channels, print on demand, uh, and being uh, yeah uh, visible and also addressing long-term preservation issues, we have to do those manually. Semantic publishing. Uh, our next challenges, which are just over the horizon, uh, are bundled up in a term that we have adopted uh, of semantic publishing. Uh, this covers the structure of the parts of a book uh, and the digital objects it might contain. Uh, it also includes the inference of meaning and being machine readable. Uh, for academic purposes, uh, this means using DOIs to isolate chapters, for example, or DOI sharding to go down to a page or maybe even a string of text, um, or to identify images or data being used in a publication. Um, we will use uh, different types of uh, media uh, for example, from TIB's uh, AV portal, which uh, uses uh, semantic video, um, as well as image deep zooming uh, using triple IF, uh, 3D um, images and, and simulations, uh, such as um, in terms of um, data science practices that are, are uh, carried out in Jupyter Notebooks. Um, we would also use uh, Wikidata and Wikibase to create linked open data representations of a publication. Um, and also in the open science uh, field, there, there are what are called computational uh, publishing um, practices, which involves uh, an even further advanced form of packaging where an actual computational environment is packaged such as creating a virtual machine for a Kubernetes cluster, uh, as is done with uh, Jupyter Books and uh, MindBinder uh, on the web. So these are concerns that are, um, yeah, um, further down the road, but important to flag up as being research interests of ours. In conclusion, um, 
What is described in the case studies is a work in progress, but it's definitely one that has moved beyond a proof of concept. Uh, the major issues around automated multi-format typesetting and using GitHub um, as a publishing platform have been identified and are, and are being resolved. Uh, and really what I have to say is really to give credit to my TIB and Academy colleagues, as well as to members of Fidus Rider and the Viblio Style uh, team, and to, of course to Interpunk Studios. Uh, and thanks also goes out to Axel Dorkop of Modern Publishing from the program of uh, Hamburg's Open Science, uh, as well as Daniel from MJ MJT, Darren from cool.org, and Lisa and Johannes, uh, last and not least, uh, from Endocode. So, thank you.